Now, what I'm about to share with you in these questions actually came from a conversation I had with somebody last weekend because this is based on some actual historical facts. I won't give you specific names. It's a general idea. But what would you say, what would a Christ-like approach be to a group of Christians who wanted to come to your city and have a free medical clinic for the indigent on Saturday? What would be revealed if a group of potential sponsors told the volunteer health care workers that they should not hold the free clinic for the poor on Saturday because Saturday is the Sabbath? And if they won't change their day to do this on a different day, then the sponsors will pull back their money. Heavy side. This is a. Uh, uh, this, this is based on some true history, by the way, guys. Yeah. You want to serve someone, you have to serve them when they need it. So this is out of a book called The Desire of Ages, page 206. Check this. And this is commenting. The Desire of Ages is commenting on the life of Christ. It's commentary. It says, Jesus had come to magnify the law and make it honorable. He, had, he was not to lessen its dignity, but to exalt it. He had come to free the Sabbath from those burdensome requirements that had made it a curse instead of a blessing. For this reason, he had chosen the Sabbath upon which to perform the act of healing at Bethesda. He could have healed the sick man as well on any other day of the week, or he might have simply have him cure, cured him without bidding him to bear away his bed. But this would not have given him opportunity he desired. A wise purpose underlay every act of Christ's life on earth. Everything he did was important in itself and in its teaching. Among the afflicted ones at the pool, he selected the worst case upon whom to exercise his healing power and bade the man carry the bed through the city in order to publish the great work that had been wrought upon him. This would raise the question of what it was lawful to do on the Sabbath and would open the way for him to denounce the restrictions of the Jews in regard to the Lord's day and to declare their traditions void. Jesus stated to them that the work of relieving the afflicted was in harmony with the Sabbath law. It was in harmony with the work of God's angels. Should God forbid, forbid the sun to perform its office upon Sabbath, cut off its genial rays from warming the earth and nourishing vegetation? Must the system of the world stand through this, that holy day? Should he command the brooks to stay from watering the fields and forests and bid the waves of the sea still and ceaseless, ceaseless their ebbing and flowing? Must the wheat and corn stop growing and the ripening clusters defer its purple bloom? Must the trees and flowers put forth no bud nor blossom on the Sabbath? Notice, every one of these examples they're given, design law. Every one of them, design law. In such a case, men would miss the fruits of the earth and the blessings that make life desirable. Nature must continue her unvarying course. God could not for a moment stay his hand or man would faint and die. And man also has a work to perform on this day. The necessities of life must be attended to. The sick must be cared for. The wants in, of the needy must be supplied. He will not be held guiltless who neglects to relieve suffering on the Sabbath. God's holy rest day was made for man, and acts of mercy are in perfect harmony with its intent. But I'm going to tell you, recently they were shut down by some sponsors who didn't think they should be having a clinic on Sabbath. Well... It could be because if you have a choice of doing it Saturday or Sunday, maybe Sunday is better because it involves a lot of moving around and setting up and whatever. Uh, you know, maybe that's what they had in mind. Mm. <laughs> maybe everybody should be fully persuaded in their own mind. Amen. Present the truth in love and leave people free. Well, what about, uh, okay, everybody's comfortable with that, but what about hiring someone to do work for you on Sabbath? We all comfortable with that? Well, this is from Ellen White, who was one of the founders of the Adventist Church, and his 18 manuscript release, page 14. Yesterday, Sabbath morning, Willie spoke at church in Asheville. At 3 p.m., we hired a horse and carriage to take us to Newton, uh, four miles from Asheville. We met a small, in a small hall upstairs and had a goodly number were assemble, assembled. Hmm. Well, I just put that out there. Along with the same thing about holy money versus unholy money when buying food on the Sabbath. You know, you go to camp meeting and you get a voucher, which is now holy money, which you can pay for your meal. It's ridiculous. <laughs> this is the silliness that makes God out to look completely unworthy of our trust. And this is the silliness 
that we are trying to overthrow from people's minds. The Sabbath was made for man as a blessing to us. And all things in harmony with God's nature and character of love are lawful on the Sabbath. All things. You cannot... See, this is why the Bible says you break the law on one point, you break it on all points, because all points of God's law are laws of love. And if you are living a life of love and service and other-centeredness, which in this particular case, they were, they were going to take a message. They're going to have a Bible study with these other people. And they hired somebody to take them there. It's no problem, but I know many Adventists that would say, no, we can't go to that because we didn't fill our car up with gas and we can't wait till the sun's down to get gas before we can go to that Bible study. It's ridiculous. This is, this is Satan playing games with people's mind to, to hinder the actual loving of other people. Let's keep the rule. Let's hurt people as long as we keep the rule.